recording is going to be in progress. Uh, setting up meeting on Facebook. I think we're on. Okay. There we should be going. Yep. Hello there, everybody. How are you? Uh, this is Alex. I'm back. Uh, we took uh, quite a half a week off. We weren't on late night last uh, last week because, among other things, I had uh, tooth problems, so I went to the dentist, and they worked on me, and I was in pain for the rest of the week. So, you know, but I'm feeling pretty good now, so at least better. And look, I've got the turkey neck. I got to do something about the turkey neck. I think, I think, I think I'll spend ten thousand bucks and have that fixed. Why not? Okay. Anyway, we're gonna let's go to uh, let's go to our, our our panel. Let's just make sure everybody here is for real. Oh, they are, and we admit all. Here they come. Charlie Wallace is here, and Marjorie is here, and Charlene Solis is here. Mike Chisholm, uh, John Ewing is here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, there's uh, there's wow. Lafrisco and Andrew Deutsch and Francine Witt. Hello, John M. Ewing. And uh, we'll probably get joined by some other people as, as the hour goes on. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Yeah. Um, How's the face? How's the mouth? The mouth uh, was uh, not good for Marjorie. It wasn't good for about most of last week, uh, but it's 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 clearing up. And now I have to go back so they can finish off the root canal, and then I got to go back one more time so they can check to make sure the the infection is gone. And wow. uh, you know, and then I uh, chip out. I don't know, maybe five thousand bucks, and my mouth is in good shape. You know. But what the hell? Was well, as, as I'm as I'm now seeking the nomination, I promise to lower those costs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything for the vote. What? Anything for the vote. Anything for the I vote. I just need to know what Marjorie needs so I can get her vote. You know, I we don't talk, we really don't talk politics very often, but I gotta tell you. Here we go. What a week, huh? Yeah. This is Hold on, I'm just gonna go back to my office. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, like okay when i asked about uh donald trump's uh you know uh, his, his his little trouble at the rally a couple of weeks back i don't think that's political like that's a world event that's the way we see it up here and uh again yesterday another world event like holy smokes this is history unfolding right in front of us this is very yeah. interesting I, I couldn't i couldn't hear what you said mike i the the ear diaper i had infected my ear <laughs> 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 yeah, that was the part that really got me at the Republican convention. He had to wear his ear doily. You ever I think? The, I think you ever see the ear. movie Tommy Boy with uh, Chris Farley and uh, David Spade? Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe gets attacked by a dog in that movie. Yeah, but the next scene, he's where he's got exactly what Trump had on his ear. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I was trying to find a screenshot of it, but I couldn't find one. Oh boy! Oh boy! Well, it's it's. Um... Yeah, what I what was kind of funny is he wore the doily. I guess that's what we uh, the ear tampon. Okay, yeah, the mini uh, mini pad uh, mini on, pad, on yeah. his ear through the convention, and then the next day when he went out to do a speech somewhere, he just had a little bandage here. Yeah, you know, yeah. what a shock! Uh, and well, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but sometimes you can't trust the things he says. <laughs> <laughs> Only when he opens his mouth. The <laughs> problem is we all know about his lies and we don't like them, but you should be terrified when he's telling the truth. Well, that's the current uh, That's the current uh, 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 take on him is that uh, he he lies occasionally. You know. Yeah, I'm afraid. I, I'm always scared when he's telling the truth because that's the stuff that we should be afraid of. Well, he just got a lie detector. It's yeah. from Kamala Harris. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm waiting for him to start attacking her Indian roots, considering oh, yeah. uh, D JD's uh, wife and his yeah, son. Yeah. Uh, was it Vivek? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> JD Vance's kid is half Indian and named Vivek. So well, are her roots Indian? Indian and Jamaican, black, yeah. black and black and Indian. Her mom was from India. Dad was from Jamaica. Okay, so it's not. She's not really what we would call black. 
Sure she is. Yes, black Alex. Why not? <laughs> Why isn't she? How, how, what percent do you have to have to be considered black? It was funny. Back in the day when I was growing up, I was we were always upset by the fact that in the South, if you were even like one tenth black, you were considered to be black. Yeah. Okay. So if you couldn't vote, you couldn't vote. A tenth made you black. Uh, and now we're having the reverse argument. Well, she is black. She's a tenth black, you know, whatever. Um, she is a minority. I think that's what we can probably <laughs> say, you know, and probably by saying that we broaden the base, you know. After uh, the podcast, look up the one drop rule and read about. Yeah, this, it was this, one drop, not one. Yeah, okay. the one drop, one drop rule is this racist thing that that's existed for years that if there's one drop of it, you're somehow to demean you. Wow. I, well, my, I, don't, I don't care what her background is. I know she can prosecute in a debate and destroy him. <laughs> she put pedophiles in jail. Guess what? He is one. She, <laughs> she, she shut down private colleges that stole money from people because they were scams. He owned one. <laughs> Go yeah. through all the things she's prosecuted. Oh, she. Uh, it, it, it's a it's a good candidate to go up against him. I mean, I I, so. I uh, at one point was questioning her ability to grab the public, and then the more I looked at her, the more I felt, yeah, this is the real deal. You know, does everybody here think that she will be on the ballot? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's already yeah. on the ballot. Yeah. yeah. She's not. No, she's not. But she will be. All the people who yeah. supposedly were going to run against her have endorsed her, except for like Joe Manchin, and he doesn't count. Okay. Yeah. So. Who <laughs> Joe Manchin? Yeah, he's thinking of re-registering re as a Democrat so he can he can run. He can yeah. wait twenty twenty. And yeah, we want to have another old old man. Yeah. I just want to know now that we got rid of uh, Biden, uh, they keep saying that we need to get rid of the the, the old man with dementia. Um, <laughs> it's it's time. Yeah, Biden's gone. Now we got to get rid of the demented one. Well, uh, you know, he, he I think he is. He I think he's probably shitting his pants right now. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That this Laura one. Loomer is now spreading rumors that Kamala Harris worked as an escort. Oh, who's who's Laura Loomer, this 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 idiot that that creates all the scandals for for Trump to then say they're true, went out and said that that Kamala Harris was a professional escort and that's how she got through college was was turning tricks. And Trump and Trump hired her. Right. And you the know, I've got I've and... got a copy of the check that, that Trump saw. gave her running for attorney general. Five thousand dollars he donated to her campaign. So he must think she's good. Are you saying Mandy? I just said who cares? He's a convicted yeah. felon but the bar yeah. is like yeah. way down here. Yeah. So yeah. he has no argument. Who cares how she got herself through college? And not only that, she's never been well, the, charged the, with a crime. He's been convicted of 34 of them. Yeah. <laughs> the problem is that it's it's totally false and she shouldn't have to defend herself for something as stupid we've as we've that. Got to, we've got to be ready for most of that to start happening. And, uh, you know, it, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's just started happening. And uh, what are we going to do? You know, we're going to we're we're going to elect her live with it during this uh, election period. But the nastier he gets, the nastier the campaign gets, the better her chances of winning. Yeah. You know, uh, and um, uh, she uh, I, I you know, I it's a very short amount of time for them to try and dig up and s solidify any dirt on her. Um, but you know, Trump is such a polarizing candidate that if you were voting for Biden, you are not going to switch to Trump just because Kamala Harris is running. You no, know? Yeah, so, you're right. You're right. Right. But and, and the, the yeah, level but, of yeah. hatred of Trump. Yeah. There's yeah. the people, the people we need to worry about are those ones in the middle that aren't the devoted Biden or, or Trump supporters. None of the guys with the red hats are changing to Kamala either. But right. uh, the guys that like W and the guys that like McCain and um the, the yeah. work guys who who are Republicans that that will support any Democrat until they can take their party back, they're all behind Kamala. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the point is the the point is that uh, uh, you know if the base he's never going to lose his base. Okay, 
But what he needs is more than his base because that's mm -hmm. not going to get him elected. And now he's got a real problem here because what woman in America isn't going to vote for Kamala Harris? You know, what black person isn't going to vote for Kamala Harris? I mean, if, what young person, what student isn't going to vote for Kamala Harris? Well, I have a I have a point. I mean, that was the same issue when Hillary ran. Is it just because Hillary was a lot more unlawful and there was a lot more history of Hillary? Sure. Yeah. People she were like, but there's no way I'm going to vote for her. And plus, Trump was the unknown. But they so, had had, Mandy, they had had eight, ten, 12 years to destroy Hillary's character and, and make her out to be something that she wasn't. But the you know right now the the besides the, this bullshit about her being an ask all this stuff the only thing the Republicans say bad about her is some line she said about coconuts years ago and that she has a, a laugh that they don't like if that's right. all that they can come up with out of the gate they really don't have stuff already saved up well just just stuff about law enforcement in her past you know yeah. her you know with that but, that I, I mean trust me I'm just yeah. saying no no I'm, I I'm totally for her I mean but. I'm just worried it's going to be the same thing where people are like, oh, you know, I'm not. The yeah, but you, you know, but she was. They can't say she's soft on crime. Right. Well, that, that was one of the things in the primaries that they went after her, which is insulting as hell to to blacks and, and Latinos and others, is that well, she was the cops, so no black guys are going to vote for her because she put black guys behind bars because they're sure. criminals. And believe me, I don't believe that for a minute. If somebody somehow takes a clip of that. That was the argument that that why supposedly black men won't vote for her is because she was in the business of putting them in jail, and it's nonsense. It's nonsense. The percentage, the percentage of 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 black men in America who vote to imply that somehow all of them are are ex cons is just freaking that, insulting that, to America. That is an argument. It's a pretty it, racist argument. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the reason that lots of black men, according to the focus groups, weren't supporting Biden was because they liked the swagger and they hated the fact that they, they had the perception that Biden was just too old and crazy. He was their crazy old uncle that they, they couldn't he was run the, the guy, He was a, he was the perfect candidate to run against right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, he had a lot of problem. I mean, he couldn't go into a debate and argue. I mean, he if he were with it in that debate, he would have stopped uh, Trump with every lie he gave. Yeah. He, didn't, yeah. he didn't take him down for any of them. And yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, uh, again, I don't think we're getting political here. We're talking no. about the, a whole shift, a whole shift in the scene, you know, yeah. and it affects all our lives, you know. And yeah, I was relieved. I was yeah. relieved that this happened. And yeah. she's got a lot more energy than good old Joe. But um, I was extremely excited. I think it's going to roll really well, personally. Well, I I, uh, I was I have a thing where I get together with Kevin and uh, a couple of other people, Patrick and uh, and Josh, and we talk on Saturday nights with each other. And they brought up something, and I said, "Wow, you know," he said. They said the Democrats really missed out on a good thing. And I said, "What was that?" This was before Biden had you know said he wasn't going to run so on Saturday. He said. They should have just before, uh, early on Thursday night, before the convention started, Biden should have said he was leaving the race. Then. I disagree. They would have had nothing to talk about. Oh, I, I, I disagree. I love the fact that they spent the entire convention trying to destroy. And now, I mean, uh, uh, Trump made some comment that he wants to sue because they've spent all these millions of dollars in the yeah. after him. And he's gone. the 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 Speaker of the House is threatening to sue the Democrats because they're they're bait and switch, and it's illegal. They're yeah. so they're so knocked off their their game. They're they're gonna have they're gonna have to go back to finding finding ways of bringing racism back in and yeah, explaining I saw why. That where, they, where they were calling this bait and switch. Do they have any other any idea of what bait and switch is? <laughs> it, well, Trump called it fraud. Yeah, it's fraud. Yeah, yeah. it's You're fraud. Right. Oh, okay. We spent all this money fighting a guy who isn't running now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Ford would have bait and switch would have been if somehow Biden got elected and then stepped down and she became president. 
Right. That, that, be, that could be construed as bait and switch, but yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. Well, you know, exactly. if if you want to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to defame somebody and they you walk know, out, I guess you won, didn't you? You know what I really <laughs> hate. <laughs> what I really hate is the television people uh, who are constantly hammering on. Well, you know, it's too late. The convention is only a couple of weeks away, and uh, uh, gee, you know, we we you, we're too late into the game here. And I'm thinking, the 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 whole game doesn't start till the conventions are over, over. with. Well, look, there's I mean, one. I was growing up. Nothing happened till the conventions because we didn't know who the nominee was going to be. But Alex, there's yep. one caveat to that. Every state has rules as to when the person has to get put on the ballot. So, like for example, in Ohio, they have to do a roll call because the convention comes after that date, which means yeah. that she could end up not being on the ballot because yeah. of the state rules. But I could I would say that any state that would prevent one of the major party candidates from being on the on the ballot uh, is gonna, is going to have a major issue in their state. I mean, they're. Talk about something that would lead people to to maybe nonviolent but revolution. Imagine if you lived in a state that wouldn't allow the Democrat or the Republican to be on the ticket. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's but there 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 are several of the states, and I don't have them in front of me, have the rules that they you have to be on their ballot the week of the convention. So they have to as soon as it's 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 done in the roll call, they've got to file right away, or they could end up not being on the ballot in certain states. But they have they still will wait for the convention. No, legally they don't no, have to there is no nominee until a convention yeah. is held yeah. yeah but the state there's states that legally if they don't have that within a certain period of time they can prevent you from being on the ballot a certain period of time after the convention but no, no, no the, just a date on the calendar i saw that about ohio and i just wondered why they would make their date before the conventions well the date's always been there they move the convention later oh okay yeah but it's and they've already they've already legislated to, to let it pass here, I believe. But I'm in Ohio. But but there that's the only legal caveat that could create a problem is if a state d that's run by, you know, a total red state. But if that's the state, chances of, of her winning in that state anyhow are pretty slim. It mm -hmm. would just screw with the popular vote. Yeah, but what, wasn't there a Supreme Court ruling that that uh, a state could not withhold that uh, uh, was a different issue? The state couldn't uh, uh, disallow a person from running. I, I I'm not a legal expert. I'm just I'm just repeating what I was what I was <laughs> reading on on legitimate websites. So I I don't know. Well, there was a, because there was a movement to get Trump off the ballot right. in some states. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, and and the Supreme Court ruled that they could not prevent a candidate from from running. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if that, if that applies being, to this. Getting on the, you know, getting on the ballot. That might be apples and oranges. I, think, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't know. There are ways around that. I think in all those, if there are states where they will not be on the ballot, people yeah. can write them in. Yeah. You know. I'll, I'll, I'll make a decree. Oh, okay. Uh, but, executive uh, order. Yeah. Yeah. It it's it's kind of interesting and fun. That here we see a whole new game, mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of kind of refreshing, isn't it? Very. I want to feel. Who's going to be your running mate? Hmm. Who's going to be your uh, running mate? Do you think? There's some Vice president for her. I, I, I think you missed. It's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Gavin Newsom, I'm sure. If, if no, it's okay, exactly. so I have a question. I have a question. Couldn't technically the Democratic National Convention turn into like a real brouhaha where you have people yeah. and go and get nominated? Like if if Gavin, Gavin, for example, isn't her running mate, technically couldn't he make a play for it at the sure. convention? He so, so the deal is before the convention, they have to get 300 delegates to sign a petition. So they have 300 and then they can... Um, hey, first of all, does anybody ask Gavin Newsom? Gavin's not allowed. He can't. He can't. No. He can't. It says because they're both from the oh, same. Right. He's, 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 so they can't. Right. He can't. The vice president can't be from the same. But state. he could run. He could run against her though if he chose to. Yeah, right? but yeah. but he's already endorsed her. 
All yeah. of the, all of the main think, guys. I don't, all wants, I, don't, I don't think he wants vice president at this point. Yeah. I mean, he'll just sit around and wait for her to go two terms and then run for president. Yeah. You know? She has yeah. all the money. Good. We got a nice we got a nice thing in the pocket, you know, for yeah. eight years from now. Well, she'll pick Mike, Mike Pence. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I might hear he's available. Governor. She might pick my I've governor. Got CNN. I've got CNN on right now, and they just said that the campaign has raised uh, $81 million in the first wow. 24 hours. Dixie wow. of those came from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, I mean, no, who is but who who is going to be the vice presidential nominee? There are a couple of names have been thrown out. Uh, one is, of course, Pete Buttigieg. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a gay vote to be had there. Uh, you know, and he is also very good at uh, speaking. Yes. You I know. think I think he's brilliant, but he gives them the ability to then go. Balls out on on the woke thing. See, they had to yeah. pick black. They had to pick an Asian. They had to pick a gay. It gives them a message. I think he'd be a brilliant president. I like Pete Buttigieg. I don't think he's yeah. the right choice. I he's think got he, two he, little kids he, at home, though, too. What? Too he's got two kids that. at home, little kids. Yeah. No, for him. He needs yeah. to be in the Senate or, you yeah. know, a little longer. Yeah, yeah, he's brilliant. I'd like to see him become a governor of some state. I think he'd be a transportation yep. secretary. What? She's been transportation secretary for three years. I mean, he's got plenty of experience there. And doing yeah, a great it, job. It's not a full bodied experience for the job. Okay. In other words, I think being president, the best people to become presidents uh, who are most qualified or are governors. who are governors because what they're doing is they're running. The United States in microcosm. Mm -hmm. you know, they've got the same things to deal with the budget, the mil local military, whatever, and things like that. And they become the best. Po I mean, look at who's been uh, Bush, uh, Clinton, uh, who else? Uh, Obama, Reagan. Reagan. Uh, LBJ was never a governor. No, LBJ was, was in the Senate. Uh, <laughs> what Lyndon LaRouche. Don Kennedy was never a governor. He Jimmy was Carter. Well, but Jimmy Carter was governor of Georgia, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm saying, but the, the, the preponderance of people who become president have been governors. FDR mm -hmm. was a governor, for instance. Yeah. The, two, the two that are interesting are Bashir and Shapiro, and I, I, I can't think of the name of the, the guy in uh, um, Illinois. Well, excuse uh, me, but Marjorie Pritzker, it's not Pritzker. Shapiro, is it? Shapiro. Depends on how you. It depends. Know. If you're from New York, it's Shapiro. If you're from yeah. if you're, if you're from Philly, it's Shapiro. In the country, it's Shapiro. <laughs> how does he pronounce it? That's what counts. Well, if you're and if you're hassled <laughs> by white supremacists, you just say Smith. <laughs> <laughs> or John. Is there is there a chance that uh, Cuomo could be allowed out of the penalty box at this point? No. No way. <laughs> he would. He would. He, Greg. He'd just write the ticket. I too mean, many, too many people. Cuomo, with Cuomo was one of my people that I named yeah. for possible mm -hmm. president. Yeah, I liked, I liked him. I liked him a lot. He's terrific, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, it was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I depended on him so much during the pandemic. Like, just come on every day and and sort of talk us down, calm us down. I loved him. And then he How got about Ellen for, a, for a, what patting a woman on the ass or something. I asked Marjorie, if Andrew Cuomo patted you on the ass, how what would your reaction be? I have a nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> they have their cheek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I often said the horrible, the worst thing about Weinstein, uh, Harvey Weinstein, was he was ugly and obnoxious, so repugnant. That you know that anything he would do to a woman would be wrong, you know. So uh, now, uh, uh, Mr. Chisholm up there in uh, Canada. Yes, sir. You guys don't care about what's going on down here, do you? Uh, yeah, but I mean, we just have a different. We have a different. Well, how are they dealing with this? in your media? How are they dealing with this whole story now? Um. I would say it's it's more. I would say even though our media is polarized up here, yeah, um, 
to some degree, it is not even close to what it is down there. Like not even close. Like we don't have media stations. Like sometimes the, like each party up here will accuse the media sometimes of cheering for the other team. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not, whereas you go, uh, like I get MSNBC up here and I get Fox News up here and both of them are severely entrenched. Clearly. They're horrible. Both of them are horrible. And they're both entrenched into a, so that's not the case up here. So up here, it's more like a little bit more, uh, here are the facts and it's not slanted as much. Um, but I mean, I'll tell you this, there's a lot of people up here that think Trump's going to mop the floor with her. Is what? That There's a lot of people up here that think that Trump is going to mop the floor with her. He's going to mop the floor with her? Yeah. And not that any, not, not that we're Trump fans. Like I'm not going to, I'm not a, He's not a guy. I don't think I'd ever vote for a guy like that. I, but I think but. to say that is to not understand her. I mean, she yeah. can I say use a term? She's a tough broad. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. she's not going to put up with any crap. Yeah. And she did. Well, we read, you read look when she, she was she running. Biden, look but. when she was running for the nomination last time, and she went up against Biden and yeah. nailed him to the wall. Yeah. yeah. Go, if you want to gain respect for her, go back and watch the videos of her as a senator grilling scumbags. I gained I I, I thought back when she was yeah. running in the primaries that she was going to be one of the top contenders because she is brilliant, she's sharp, and she takes She's no crap. She here. she is she is a law enforcement prosecutor. Yeah. Yep. She's, it it you know, the, the question is whether the misogynistic and, and the beauty of it is all the misogynists in this country are voting for Trump anyhow. So we don't we, we don't need to worry about her alienating people who don't like strong women. OK, so here's the thing that I think that, uh, OK, I can answer that question a little bit there. There's a silent. There's a silent uh, group of people that are not misogynists, but don't like that. That whole drain the swamp idea still. I think that there's a lot of people out there. Like, it's going to be a very interesting election from my standpoint. I like. Do you guys think it's going to be close, or do you think she's just going to be yeah. like, like? Do you think she's going to, you know, mop the floor with him? I, I think she's going to mop the floor with him. Do. All she has yeah. to do is irritate him, and he will start striking out and making mistakes. Hmm. I, he, he's a, he's a bully. Bullies bullies can be taken care of. Believe me, I learned in school. You know, I. That's why I learned to be funny because what you, they can't hit you while they're laughing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but but she, you know, she's put up with some pretty big bullies <laughs> in time <clears throat> in court dealing with the scumbags who she's prosecuting, and uh, this is just another one of those guys, you know, just another one of those guys. So I think the notion that he's going to wipe the the floor with her is. I, I hope that he believes that, okay, uh, yeah. and and because they're going to be sadly mistaken, you know. So, oh, here comes Don Giller, and he, you know, ah. he he's running away from the debate. He's now refusing to, to. I mean, there's there's so many reasons to believe that he's scared. And if she's smart, there are several things that set him off. Every time that he says some hyperbolic bullshit about every, every. She's a lawyer. She knows how to go. You know, uh, according to my legal studies, only people of low intelligence use hyperbole like that. <laughs> and just keep insulting his his low IQ. He yeah. can't or, take it. Or, or, We're going to get that. Him, you can't handle the truth moment, and that'll end this thing. Or right. call him a loser. He call him a loser. Yeah. Low intelligent, low IQ, yeah. pervert, unliked, ugly, right. unskilled, a yeah. cheater. You know, All I'd of like- those things set him off. I'd like to say we don't talk about politics on this program, but if there was ever a time to talk about it, it's this is the time. And and still, it it's not talking about partisan politics here. It's talking about you know making odds on a race, basically. Yeah. Talking about the uh, reality show that America has become this last few yeah. weeks. It's crazy watching this unfold. These the, are big the, moments. The biggest yeah. variable is this group of Republicans who are never Trumpers, the Bulwark guys, the Lincoln Project, they're they're out there influencing Republicans who want their party back to either stay home or vote for the Democrat. Hold your nose, four years, they think they can retake if they can retake their party. 
and they're helping. And when they first came out, everybody was so suspicious of them, but they're they're one hundred percent on board with keeping Trump out of office, whatever the, whatever they have to do legally to do it. Well, you yeah. sure Brooke and Nikki Haley uh, voters have as endorsed Kamala Harris. Yep, Nikki Absolutely. Haley, Republican voters have have endorsed. Kamala Harris. There was a time in this country where, you know, to begin with, I don't think you should have to register as anything because then that locks you into voting that way. If you don't have that and you just, you know, you, you register to vote and you can choose to vote for either person, fine. But when you're locked into being part of a party, then are now rooting for your side. That only occurs when you're talking about primaries. You have to be registered in a lot of states, either Republican or Democrat, in order to participate in the primary. The general yeah. election, you don't have to be registered at all. At anything, yeah. 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 But Is that true for all we states? Away, we should do away with primaries altogether. Mm. They, they, they are not in the Constitution. Mm. They were only started in about, I think, 1912 was the first primary ever held in this country. And they really didn't come into full um, play until, I'd have to say, the 60s, maybe the 70s. Well, then yeah. how, are the dele- how are the delegates chosen then? They were chosen. Convention. They were chosen by going to the convention. Mm. And then they would go in there and people would say, well, I'm running for president and I'm not, I'm running for president and I want to run for president. And then they would fight with each other. And they used to hold what they call caucuses with each other and so on. And they would come out of the convention with their standard bearer. That's it. Can you see my uh, check, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> On, That's uh, sign- November, or September 13, 2011, Donald Trump donated $5,000 to the reelect attorney general Kamala D. Harris campaign. Lovely. <laughs> I bet a psychiatrist could have a career based on just looking at his signature. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Um, he he left office and I sold my shares in Sharpie. But, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, uh, I just, I don't think that it's going to be easy for him. Right now they're going, well, she's two or three points behind Trump. Well, that was a poll that was taken before she was even in the mix yeah. for president. Okay, uh, I, I think we will find that she uh, she turns out very well in the polls in the next couple of weeks without even doing anything, without even being out there campaigning. And she'll get the post uh, convention bump, you know, after that as well. So, yeah, and she's only got you know how many days to. To go out and campaign, he's out there Trump. already. You know, not really difficult. Um, Mr. Uh, um, uh, uh, Gilmer, Gilmer, is it Gilmer? Yes. <laughs> His Gilmer. Uh, yeah. You you have any comments, Mr. Gilmer? When did you start having ramble on Monday afternoons? <laughs> <laughs> It's my no, fault. I you, apologize. Well, you said, you know, I mean, what we we got to talk about it. It's you know the elephant in the room. What we come on here and we just pretend like this didn't happen over the weekend. It's a little difficult, you know. But again, like like zoom it out. Two weeks in a row, or three, but within three weeks, you had one of the candidates have an assassination attempt on them, and the other candidate dropping out. Like, like again, that's more. It's not even just political. It's like, wow, this is history unfolding. Yeah. Well, I you know. Uh, I'm okay with that. Assassination attempt. I'm trying to figure what exactly happened to Trump. <laughs> Me too. Was that an assassination attempt? Yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, what? It nicked his ear. It, 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 Hold on. Didn't didn't one or two people die from it? Yes. Well, yeah, three people got shot and one of them died. Yeah. But that's because the guy wasn't a good aim. A lot of people are saying that well, how he nicked his ear wasn't from the bullet. The bullet yeah. hit the teleprompter and the glass from the teleprompter nicked his ear. There were four Pittsburgh police officers that were injured the same way that were that they weren't talking about in the media, but the local station covered it. That they were they were hit by shrapnel from the from the first bullet. 
Like that's so, a big and, deal. And Trump really? won't release. Wow. He wanted to see the birth certificate, but he won't release his medical record to see what kind of an injury he actually had. Mm-hmm. So until he until he shows, then we don't know what the truth but is. But God was on his side. Well, it's because the flag. Did you hear about this? The flag got hit by the wind, and it looked like an angel. So an angel yeah, I saw bad. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't know what to think about that. But and how I'm, many times did he say Almighty God this weekend? And you've never heard <laughs> him talk about that before. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, he's got a special effect for everything. <laughs> <laughs> However, I want to show you something. Here's my Trump special effect. <laughs> yeah. there you go get get rid of that a second i want to want to show everybody something uh take your arm your uh left arm is it yeah your left arm and move it straight out to as far as you can make it go to the side no the side. Side. there we go, there go. <laughs> behind the scenes yeah, well, I, I I used to have to do that. We were doing the uh, the show from the TV studio in the early days. Um, I I I was in a square like that too, and I had to not move my hand outside it; otherwise, it looked like I was amputated. <laughs> oh, oh, what was that? Ow. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. But I mean, he just milked it for everything he yeah. could. He invoked God, who saved his life, and you know he's he's never he's hardly ever been to church. What's he doing? You know, he walked well, into he a church. In, he stood in front of St. John's Church across from the White House and held the Bible upside down. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and and it was weird because he he turned it upside down, and none of the none of the the gods leaked out, fell out. <laughs> Uh, just That's just subscription true. cards. He never took the wrapper. <laughs> God is left the, his son. <clears throat> you know. But didn't the doctor treat him say they didn't even give him stitches in his ear? Yeah. So why has he got yeah. this huge <laughs> pad of Ronnie on Jackson? Jackson. The, only, the only medical Johnson. report is that Jackson guy, or or as Trump can't remember his name, uh, who is no longer a person legally allowed to practice medicine. Right. Who ran the pill mill at the at the White House? And if you yeah. if you look into that and look at the records from the White House of of the fentanyl patches and all these crazy medications, including the date rape drug that they dispensed by the thousands during the time he ran the White House pharmacy. So you know who are you going to believe the guy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's just one one ridiculous freaking thing after another. Well, I, it's just all you know it. it it's all po- politics. And when you, you know, let's face it, somebody died in this incident. Mm-hmm. And you don't use a dead person for pol- political advantage, you know? And you, you know, like that guy, is, he's a fireman, so they had his fireman uh, gear uh, on a, uh, on a well, coat hanger or whatever on stage. Mm-hmm. With his oh. name on the back. And he went and kissed the helmet. How how much do we have to donate to get a swatch of the bloody shirt that Trump was wearing? Because that'll be the next <laughs> fundraising campaign. Was there enough blood on it? No, but they'll put some there. Yeah, yeah. little little That's... Heinz ketchup. Although that was a Democrat. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not even a you know I am so I don't trust politicians so much that I honestly believe it could have been that he didn't get hit at all. That he it was all planned and he had a squib in his hand. That he went, he squeezed on his ear and let this fake blood go down the front of That's his. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. I thought it was a staple r- remover, because he he put his hand up so fast. I don't know, but then the other guy d- got done in. So yeah, it's, it's it's it is a possibility. I I I highly doubt it, but it's a possibility. I know. Look, I'm I'm sorry. I for, almost I, anything. I'm sorry for days. the guy who lost his life. Uh, it, you know, it, it's terrible, and for his family, and so on and so forth. But he didn't. He didn't t- try to save his family. He got hit. He was killed, and if anything, he fell on them. He didn't. He wasn't. There were, he was in no position in that small amount of time. Yeah. To help his family. And God didn't care about him. So. Yeah, God obviously yeah. didn't care you about. Know? 
Well, I thought God was supposed to prevent the shooter from showing up. I, yeah. 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 Well, today they had the, they had the, um, no, what do you call it? The head of the Secret Service testifying before Congress. And, uh, you know, it's it's all woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know, in that business, you can make one mistake and it can be deadly. Yeah. And we're all prone as human beings to make mistakes. You know, uh, and, and uh, they tried to explain why they didn't have anybody checking out that roof is because it was sloped. And it wasn't the kind of place where you could get a good advantage that way. And You're then somebody, the, line of fire. the guy there, you know, they were wrong, Alex. They yeah, were wrong just... in that they screwed up. If they had shot the guy before he did anything, they would have been heroes. You know, uh, all I'm saying is it's all woulda, coulda, shoulda after it's all over with. Oh, we should have done this and we should have done that. And you should have done this and you should have done that. And the fact is that, you know, I mean, these are incidents which happen and you have to be ready for them. But I don't think also they had enough uh, Secret Service people watching him to be able to prevent this, too. They, I, they, saw a story, they, I, I saw a story that the snipers on the building behind the podium had the shooter within their sights for 90 seconds before the shot, and they did not shoot him because they did not get permission. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, who, God, who, really? Who do they get permission from? The head of the detail. Yeah. Until they, they fired the shot. Did they ask for permission? Yes. Where did they, you must have, they must have different engagement rules because as soon as the shot rang out, then then the sniper took him out. Yeah. But it was after the sniper had already, uh, it was after the shooter had already taken his shot. And then at that point, you make up your own mind on what you're going to do. Right. I'm curious, Vernon, where, where did you actually hear that? I've not heard it. Uh, I don't know. I've seen another one on YouTube. I think it was on YouTube. Somebody was talking on there, but there was another one where a guy who was in the, the, crowd behind Trump, behind the podium, and he was shooting a cell phone video showing a guy who looked like Secret Service ushering people out of the way right before the shot was fired. Hmm. And he did not go towards the president when the what shot I, rang out. What, what, I, what I love, if you want to see sheer stupidity, go back and watch some of that footage and forget about looking at Trump and forget about looking at several different people. Look at the crowd. Yep. And what they're doing and how they're reacting to it. They're either taking pictures with their cell phones, okay, or one guy was giving the finger to the network camera. Yeah. And, and the president's already been shot. Or the, the former president has already yes. been shot. And, and uh, these people are doing the stupidest God. None of them are reacting like gunshots went off, you know. Except that maybe there's a dead guy lying next to them. Yeah. So it's all. Who knows? Woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know. Um, the people uh, who were actually there being interviewed, like I, I, I haven't seen a ton of stuff. I've never, never, never really looked for it either, though. Like, was it chaos? <laughs> <laughs> was it was it a chaotic? Thing? like it didn't seem like bedlam but let's like, talk about rare records <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about rare records yeah we had that record, Did, now, is, that, record. Is, is, is the one you have don is the one you have there is that uh, the real mccoy yeah but you had to remove the the uh <laughs> It was one of the ones that got covered by the new cover, right? right? I got one of those, and I tried to get it off, and I tried to steam it off and ruin the cover completely. Yeah. I just want to report that uh, the last surviving original Four Tops member died today. Oh. Wow. That's that's my input for today. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm more and upset about Bob Newhart. By the way, I don't know if you yeah. saw it on my Facebook page, but I found a picture 
of myself and Dr. Ruth. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that oh, yeah. Beautiful. And that as beautiful. I look at it, I just look and see how small she was. She was tiny. I'm standing next to her like a doll. Yeah. How's your tooth? How's my tooth? Yeah. Um, because you canceled last week. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I didn't cancel this show. Oh, I, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, the last week's rambles. Yeah. yeah, and I, I had to wait till it was the right time to decide to cancel those shows, which, of course, was tooth hurty. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't believe you said that. <laughs> believe I said that. They blame, the time, that. Yeah. blame Albert for that joke. Yeah. Every time I went on my my, my tooth is hurting, he goes, Oh, well, wait till the dentist gets here at tooth hurting. He always used to do that to me. So <laughs> but uh oh no, I was out of it last how bad was I was really out of it last week, wasn't I, Marjorie? I you know. I mean, did you have it treated? Did you I, was, I, I had, You're out of it. I, I had the pain. Then I went to the dentist, and they did, you know, half a root canal to stop the pain. And so it <laughs> swelled up, and I, w I wasn't able to do anything for a week, you know. Uh, Mondays come along, I'm able to. I thought what, I might have to go to the dentist today, but I didn't have to go to the dentist. So, yeah. What time was the appointment? Tooth hurty. <laughs> Actually, I've got it. Here's what happens my dentist. My dentist had an office here in New York. And all of a sudden, the office building decides to evict them and everybody else in the building so they can turn it into apartments. All right. Have I got They're this? Making it Mar 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 Marjorie. Into Marjorie. Into a what? I'm sorry. What? They're they're going to make the uh, the make it into in apartments, and the place where they're moving into won't be ready till September. Yeah, won't be ready till September. So she they have an office in Westchester. She comes yeah. down and picks me up and takes me to their office in Scarsdale, and uh, then I go there and I get my tooth work done, and I have to wait for her to get ready to go back. Did you have a car? Huh. It was a broom. Actually, it's a very nice car. What brand? What brand is it, Marjorie? It's a BMW. BMW. Very nice. Very. I'm Andy. Happy to everyone. Peace out. Have a great week. Yeah, you've got to go. You know, she. If you want, if you want to see her at her best, go take one of her classes. Uh, but anyway, yeah. have a good rest of the day, Mike. No, Andy. Glad you were here. <laughs> Everybody wave goodbye to Mandy. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, oh, yes. Uh, uh, we have a question from John Ewing. Yes, John. Actually, Alex, I didn't. I was just trying to wave to Mandy. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Uh, oh, by the way, Paula, you know, was here on visiting us. And she wasn't on yes. last week because she didn't get back in time, right? Because the plane was delayed, as they invariably are. Well, wait um, a minute. You left here late because the plane was late taking off. When you got to the airport, it was still late taking off? No, uh, um, but um, it was, uh, I think the plane took off at uh, 2.30 or something. Anyway, I was, I was, <laughs> I was not. Did I say two thirty? <laughs> um, anyway, all of the reports about people flying have been a mess. My son is coming home from from a, a weekend in Boston, and uh, um, it's a it's a two two um, step journey, and his plane is is uh, uh, has been on the runway. Um, yeah. Just just stuck. Yeah, a little problem with the computers. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. It's, but my weekend with with uh, you and Marjorie was a total delight. I'm very glad that I. You know, it's a total joy for us. It, the trouble is, it's too short. You come on a Friday and you leave on a Monday. You know. True. That's uh, nice to hear. Uh, she, uh, she's a great, great uh, guest, and she makes her bed too. That's. <laughs> 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 But uh, anyway, so uh, what's new with you, Gil? Or anything? Uh, 
Uh, I'm busy writing my uh, my John Ronsheim encyclopedia. Your what? Is, uh, I'm doing research on on a college professor. Whoa! What does um, he teach? Pardon me. What does he teach? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, music. Uh, he died in 1997. Oh wow! Yeah, this is Giller doesn't get around to doing things about you till you're dead for at least 20 years. <laughs> yeah, I'll do something about you in what a week. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. 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 Not. Could be, you know, if I die in a week, you're going to feel real bad about this. <laughs> yeah. I'll have so little to work with. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Are, you, are you writing a book? It, it, it's, it's turning into a book length project, but it'll probably... I'll, I'll I'll put it up in chapters on my blog. That's what I'll do. Giller, because... you have to understand. Giller has turned turn, 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 has changed a thing we like to call uh, busy work into a profession. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I mean, most stuff you do doesn't. Yeah, it, it'll garner maybe five views. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and double for you. Oh boy! Wait till well, wait till he does the history of Alex Bennett on on the internet. That will be a big one. Also, you should uh, we should talk. I should have you come and do. Uh oh, a uh oh, Jeff. It, oh, I'm back on. He got it. He got what it. What happened, Jeff? Yeah. That's what happens when I don't bring Pam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand why you have a bad signal, Marjorie keep uh, freezing and so on and so forth when we have a uh, 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 what do I you don't know everybody is frozen and there's some black squares where I don't even see the, the people <clears throat> how come you that's happening oh I know what you yeah. are you're on the wrong you're on the wrong Wi-Fi hmm. what should I be to the neighbor uh -huh. if you if you go to the bolo booster you'll do better the well it's almost over should I try you're probably on the A B M M Y. Where should I go? Uh, 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 Bolo Mills Booster would probably do better for you. And what is Bolo named find... after? Huh? And what is Bolo named after? Well, Bolo is my nickname when I was a kid. There we go. And really? Mill was Marjorie's nickname when she was a kid. Well, my friends still call me Mills. Yeah. I'm um, Alex. I'm on Bolo Mills. And now we have your passwords. You're on Bolo Mills now? Yeah. Yeah, nothing's happened. Nah. So you go on Bolo Mills 5G? Time to reset the router. No, no, don't yeah. do 5G. Admin? What? Admin. admin. What? No, no, admin, no. No, nothing, no admin. Oh. No. Where, where, where did where did Bolo come from? What 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 was the? Uh, uh, I'll the tell sports. you exactly. Uh, my uncle, right? Uh, my uh, my father's brother. His name was Boleslav. Uh huh. And of course, they nicknamed him Bolo. They referred to him as Bolo. But when he died, when he was twenty one. Wow. So as is the tradition with Jews, you name your children after a dead relative. That's a really nice tradition, isn't it? It is. Right? And so the one I was going to get strapped with, had to get strapped with, was Bolo or Boloslav. Wow. My parents did Amen. not want to do that to me. <laughs> so they looked uh, through the all kinds of things. They decided on the name Bennett, which is the most... Anglicized name, I think they could possibly come up. Mm -hmm. That was Bennett Schwarzman, but they kept referring to me as Bolo when I was a child until uh, maybe a, a nine or ten. I was Bolo. Then wow. I didn't Someone call you Benny. Oh, I found that my name was Bennett, and so I told my parents, "I want to be called Ben. Call me Ben." 
So they stopped calling me Bolo. You know, every kid comes to that decision at a certain point. But mm. as I grew older and I had things to name, I used Bolo. Uh, you know, the Bolo Chronicles, which is the history of my life and yeah, yeah, yeah. in video. And, you know, so I really liked the, you know, I really embraced the name Bolo for stuff, but nobody could ever figure out where it came from. And that's where it came from. Huh. You know, I think it was Mel Brooks was on a show years ago and the, they were the kids were saying they were going to name him after him. And he had a normal name. And then they finally said, OK, we agree. We're going to name the kid. And he said, well, you have to go with my birth name, Deuteronomy. <laughs> 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 the mad, mad About You was the show. You know, the guy who 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 had the the greatest name in the world was uh, was Albert Brooks. Mm-hmm. As his father was Al Einstein, uh, not Al Einstein. What was his father's name? Harry he, Einstein. Well, he what? Harry Einstein. Harry Einstein. Harry? You're absolutely right. Very good. Wow. Yeah. Uh, there we go. He, he keeps his mouth quiet for an hour, and then I, <laughs> that's what I'm here for for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> contingencies. Contingencies. I was his father, and Harry Einstein used to be on radio playing a character called Parky a Carcass. <laughs> he had a radio show called, you know, here, you know, here comes Parky, and things like that, you know, and he had a career as Parky a Carcass. In fact, he died. I bet Giller knows how Harry Einstein died, don't you, Giller? I'm looking it up here. Oh, I know. <laughs> Who knows? I, I know. He did some dinner. Some dinner. Yeah, Friars to roast. roast. Yeah. The roast. Oh, wow. He died in a Friars Cup roast. Come on, yeah, roast. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. He brought the house down. Killed huh? it. Brought the house down. Went and sat down. Had a heart attack and died. Mm. Well, wow. and they said this will slay you, right? <laughs> who did who did he pass out on? Uh, oh. uh, was it? It wasn't Dean Martin. It was um. No, nope. it was uh, Edward Berger. No. <laughs> no, I wasn't there that night. <laughs> Desi Arnaz. Desi Arnaz. Desi Arnaz. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. For Desi and Lucy. Hmm. Oh, okay. Wow. And uh, he just uh, he just dropped dead. <laughs> but the real treat for Albert Brooks is guess what his real name is? Albert, Albert Einstein. Einstein. <laughs> wow. well, super Which dangerous. is weird because, you know, if I were a parent, I would not do that to my kid. You know, but then again, his father was a comedian. Hmm. Uh, no, he was famous for dying at the Fires Club Roast. In fact, I think somewhere I had a copy of it. The audio. Yeah, the um, audio's out there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing a lot of comedians have died at those roasts. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, uh, uh, you either die or you kill. Or you're killed. Or you kill. <laughs> One or the other. It's not funny that we use those words for some laughter. I mean, that's just weird. Yeah. I <laughs> boy, I died out there. <laughs> well, the, the, French, the, the French word for orgasm is little death. Yeah, it's true. But T more, yeah. What little death? death. Let, me see, let me see it more. Yeah. Yeah. That's a story. By the way, my great grandfather was also Harry Einstein. <laughs> Seriously, was he really? Yeah. My great grandmother was Jane Einstein. Wow. No kidding. No relation. <laughs> That's why I keep my hair short so I don't get mistaken for Uncle Al. <laughs> my great uncle was Howdy Doody. <laughs> he was made of wood. <laughs> you know, he got wood. Stiff. That guy was a stiff. Uh, uh, Howdy Doody. Oh boy. <laughs> is that is that a gun in your pocket or is, <laughs> are you glad, just glad or to is see it a ventriloquist dummy? There's my gun. Uh, is it true that uh, that you that you related to Howdy Doody? Yeah. <laughs> First, uh, my grand uncle. Because uh, there was a director at Antioch whose last name was Rose. I can't remember his first name. Uh, he was the uh, uh, 
his face was the inspiration for Howdy Doody. Oh, no kidding. Oh, poor man. No, I can't. <laughs> you went to school in Oberlin, Don? <laughs> Take that as an insult. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm here. How many here remember Howdy Doody? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an old yeah. crowd here. They grew up with it. You grew up with Howdy Doody, right? Yeah. Yep. And Clarabelle, yes. Mm -hmm. Who played Clarabelle? Wasn't oh, it Bob, was, yeah. Bob Keishan, maybe? That's right. Yeah. Captain Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Yeah. My mother said I hated Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> I don't know why, but. <laughs> Captain okay. Kangaroo was a little, room. He was a little scary, you know? He was. Captain Kangaroo was yeah. too late, I think, for most of us, because that show was made for kids who were about five years old. Yeah. And you got to be like eight and you no longer cared about Captain Kangaroo. Anymore. But you also watched it on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what yeah. We get, Mr. Chisholm? Uh, here's an interesting perspective, potentially to nobody. But uh, <laughs> my the reason, my gateway to Howdy Doody and my perspective on Howdy Doody is because of Andy Kaufman. That's how I found out who Howdy Doody was. Of course. Was. Mm -hmm. That's how I found out who he was. Like, All right. Such a yeah, child. I just looked at the clock. We've run out of time. In fact, oh, we're over time. Yeah. You see, it's interesting that we started out getting political because you couldn't avoid it this weekend. Right. By the end of the show, we're non-political, totally. We're howdy duty. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I want to get political. I'm going just back. a nice just... bunch of people. Uh, well, that's, we... a, that's some literary arc, I tell you. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> right? well, politicians, a bunch of clowns. <laughs> so we got a vice president. Marjorie, thank you for being night. with us. What's for dinner tonight? Anything? A surprise. Oh, it surprise. isn't a surprise. I know what's for dinner. She she went out to lunch and brought me back a salad. Did you bring me back the big salad? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All everybody here gets that, but her. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Charlie, mm -hmm. good having you here. What is what does the shirt say? Be greater than average. Oh, <laughs> oh that's great. That's good. Thanks also to uh, Charlene for being here. Yeah. Charlene, is that a tattoo? Yeah. That's oh, so oh. Cool. nice. Um, and is that is new? Oh uh, no, I've had this one forever. I have, I have nine tattoos, wow. but this one is my. I like elephants. And I do too. Yeah. So oh I have my a gosh, she's a closet it's Republican. Great. Be it's careful. Great. <laughs> great. Marjorie, no, 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 no. Mar <laughs> Marjorie loves elephants. I Just do. I have a whole collection. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, and uh, uh, of course, uh, Mike Chisholm. Good to have you here, as always. Uh, it's Len Lafrisco. Wouldn't be a show without you, Len. Uh, 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 also, Andrew Deutsch, you make me laugh. Yeah. Uh, and Francis, <laughs> good to see sign. you here. John Ewing, love having you here. Paula, we love having you there, but we, we love forgot you Jeffrey. here. Uh, we forgot Jeffrey. We haven't gotten there yet. And that's <laughs> what? Still got more. <laughs> what did you say, Marjorie? We got Vernon to do too. I, I can't hear you. What are you saying? You, said you forgot Jeffrey. No, you, he's working his way down. It's all good. Keep well, going. Jeffrey's at the top of mine. Give me oh. time, will you, woman? <laughs> get off my back. <laughs> Don't mess him up. Jeez, she's so controlling. So, John Ewing, thank you. Paul Levin, thank you. Vernon Nunn, always a pleasure having you here. Don Giller, I don't know why you call. I don't get <laughs> <laughs> Roy Cooper. <laughs> Roy okay. Cooper? Who's Roy Cooper? That's who Harris is going to pick for VP. Okay. Governor, Roy Cooper? Governor of North Carolina. Right. Uh, uh, How about the governor of Kentucky? Uh, you know, Mr. Bashir. Because Kentucky okay. won't be in play. North Carolina can be. Ah. Yeah, you got a point. Yeah. I think you should pick Roy Cohn. I think, they should, I think they should pick Jeff. I think we should talk right. more politics. <laughs> <laughs>
And Say good night, Gracie. Anyway, it's wonderful having you all here. It just uh, this is the one show I will not miss. I told the dentist I have to be back by two thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty. And I'm going to do it next week, and I may be in pain, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to be here for with all of you because I, I think the world of you. And finally, we finish off the show with the immortal words of Edward Berger, who says, "That's all, folks. Have a nice week, everybody. Uh, thank, thank you, for thank you. See y'all. Okay, bye bye. See you."